With today being June 19th and the release of one of the most anticipated games of the year and The Last of Us Part 2 being released today and then next week, actually a week from today, the Cyberpunk 2077 event Night City Wire is supposed to come out showcasing off the new gameplay. And last week, the PS5 reveal, not only of the console, but of the mini games that are supposed to come out. It seems like we're kind of in this middle ground with the gaming industry, where it seems like we're in a calm before the storm, I guess. Maybe not middle ground, but, you know, before essentially this huge burst of games are supposed to come out. Um, starting off with The Last of Us Part 2. And I, before, like, we kind of go forward with all of this new content, all of these new games, all of this new information. I kind of wanted to go back and look at one of my favorite games. And no, I'm not even gonna be facetious. This is my favorite game of all time. I think this is the best open world game of all time. And that is obviously The Witcher 3. You know, when I, I've talked a lot about this game on my channel, I've done, you know, uh, analysis of this game. I've talked about the story. I've talked about the combat. I've talked about all of the stuff that you usually see in like reviews and analysis and stuff like that. But I just, today I just want to talk about some of my favorite aspects of the game besides, you know, the obvious hard hitting stuff like the story and the combat. And to be honest with you, one of my favorite things about this game is quite possibly the different regions that you find within The Witcher 3. You know, the different regions of Velen and Novigrad and Skellige and the DLC regions as well. I think, the, like, the if you look at the map, the entirety of, like, the eastern part of Novigrad and Velen, like, that really doesn't have a lot of content when, within it before the DLC, before the Heart of Stone DLC came out. And then after that DLC came out and you downloaded it, it added in a whole bunch of new content to that region. And you pretty much spend the majority of that DLC only inhabiting that region and going around to the countryside. It's like the deep, deep country of the game. And it's just so much to, fun to, to go in all of these different regions of Velen, which is kind of this swampy marsh area that's also war-torn, to Novigrad, which is, you know, this very, very affluent and rich city. It has these slums in it where you can see all of these poor and impoverished people living in it, to the rich neighborhoods where a lot of the, you know, a lot of the politicians and the rich people they live in and how their lives are completely different from one another, to Skellige, where, you know, it's this Viking tribal island area where all of these island tribes are trying to gain power on that cluster of islands and they're trying to decide you know how exactly do we move forward in the future do we have a leader that's a little bit more passive than the other one or do we have a leader that's incredibly more aggressive and is going to be the more traditional leader for our culture it's this very very interesting dynamic between looking back in the past and saying you know like this is how we've done things for hundreds if not thousands if not tens of thousands of years to seeing like maybe we should change up the game because we're getting slaughtered right now by the black ones and maybe we need to change that up or else they'll just come in and destroy us the regions they sometimes make the characters and because they make the characters they make the plot and plot seems a lot more organic because it is because you have all of these different ways of influencing all of these different characters and because you influence the characters you indirectly influence the plot and there's some fantastic characters within this game as well there's you know obviously Geralt and then Yennefer and I wrote them down hold on let me just read you off the characters that I wrote down kind of off like the top of my head there's Geralt obviously there's Triss there's Yennefer there's Ciri there's Zoltan there's Dandelion there's Priscilla, who's a new character, who's also like a f really, really fantastic character in her own right, and Dijkstra, and all of the rest of the characters that aren't just in the main story, but also are in like the DLC as well. Like the Heart of Snow DLC has like some of the best storytelling and some of the hardest questions that you yourself have to answer I've ever seen in all of gaming. And then on top of that, you have my favorite region in the game in Toussaint, which is this breath of fresh air from all of this like political strife that you have to deal with. You have to find Siri. You're trying to find Siri. Yo, where's Siri? Where's Siri? Yennefer, help me find Siri. Triss, help me find Siri. Zoltan, Dandelion, where's my adopted daughter named Siri? Don't have to do that anymore. You found Siri. The game is over with. This is you supposed to kind of be going. You're supposed to be on vacation. You're supposed to be going away from all of this like real world 
end of the world strife that you've pretty much tried to overcome for the entirety of the game. And you go to Tucson and it's kind of this, you know, vacation. It's this it's in this wine land. If you notice very very like carefully, the color palette that they use for Tucson is completely different from the color palettes that they use for Velen and Novigrad and Skellige. It's completely different. It's a lot more brighter. It's a lot more saturated. Meanwhile, in all of these other regions, it's doom, it's gloom, it looks bleak because it is bleak. Because for the majority of the game, Geralt is kind of searching for his daughter and nobody, like every everybody is kind of doing their own thing. Geralt is doing his own thing. All of these characters are doing their own thing. And it's like, you know, do you kind of obsess yourself with your own problems or do you help out, help out other people? Because really the cast of characters within the game only becomes unlocked when you help out these other characters, when you, you know, listen to their problems and you help them out in, the, in their problems, and it's like, oh yeah, we're friends again. Like, Triss and Yennefer at the start of the game, they hate you. They, they like, there's a twinge of, like, hatred to them, and then it's like, at the end of the game, it's like, depending on what you pick and what you do and stuff like that, it's like, oh, you know, you're on good grounds with both of them, you know, maybe not on the same terms as both of them, but, you know, you're on good grounds, you know, if you pick Trish, it's like, okay, Yennefer understands, but, like, like, what, what's she gonna do? You, like, you two raised a daughter together. It's like, Trish kind of goes off on her own and does her own thing if you don't pick her. But for the most part, whenever you help out characters in the game, they repay that with extreme amounts of loyalty and really, really cool and fun interactions together. Like, some of the best moments of the game are when all of the characters kind of form together to fight against the Wild Hunt in this, like, Avengers style of fights where you have the magicians holding off the Wild Hunt in the forest and you go hunting the wild hunt with all of your witcher brothers in the forest and you're cloaked and you're trying to close all of the portals that they're entering in and it's it's just really really cool and fun scenes within the game and it, it, it would never ever 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 happen if you didn't put in the work of establishing these relationships with these characters that can form these great bonds and those great bonds they lead to fantastic moments like I mean I can just go on and on I mean the Heart of Stone DLC is a perfect example of that as well and on top of that the the Blood and Wine DLC the end of the game it's like it's the payoff for all of your hard work throughout the entirety of the series it's you know it's Geralt's final moments within you know gaming because CD Projekt Red said this is this is it this is Geralt's final game his final hurrah and it pays off so wonderfully and then you know at the end of the main game with Siri it's fantastic to see that you know she's kind of doing her own thing it's fantastic to see that you know the life that she has chosen is the life that she wants even if it may like you may have wanted her to be the empress that would have been like really really cool but at the same token it's not about what you want it's about what her, she wants and you know what she wants is to kind of be this anonymous witcher and it's cool to see her kind of go off and do her own thing as well. And when I go back to the main theme of this video, looking kind of back in the past before we look forward to the future, you know, before we look forward to Cyberpunk 2077, I see so much of The Witcher 3 in Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, it's a first person shooter. Yes, it's a RPG. Yes, it's held in a futuristic sci-fi sci dystopian future, but I see so much of the game design that CD Projekt Red has put into The Witcher 3 into Cyberpunk 2077. I can't wait for whatever Cyberpunk 2077 is going to have within that game. I can't wait for Night City Wire to come out on Thursday so that way we can look at that and so that way we can talk about it. I just, I'm so excited where the gaming industry is currently and where it is going to go later on in the future. This has been 24. Remember to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe for more. Until my next video, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.